Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now a lot of you have been requesting that I test Valorant on low-end hardware so that's what I thought I'd do in today's video. So I threw together this PC that features pretty old specs. We've got the i3-530 in here, Intel's first core i3 processor. It's a dual core chip with four threads that can be picked up for about two or three pounds here in the UK. And we've also got the aging 9800 GT. This is a 512 megabyte DX10 card from 2008. I wouldn't recommend purchasing one of these anymore. And the same sort of goes for the i3 because both of these parts won't really do you any favors, to put it nicely, when it comes to modern games. The 9800 GT doesn't support the latest DX11 or DX12 APIs, and the i3 530 will struggle in some intensive games. In fact, you saw how it performed if you watched the previous video in comparison to the new i3 10100. Whilst it could hold its own in some scenarios, well, you're going to see a lot of issues in others. So this system, combined with four gigabytes of RAM, would probably cost you no more than 50 pounds here in the UK, 50 dollars, 50 euros to throw together. And like I say, I wouldn't recommend building a system like this. Now the minimum system requirements for Valorant state an E8400 and Intel HD 4000 graphics. Now you can't use these two in combination because the E8400 doesn't have any integrated graphics, let alone HD 4000 graphics. So the specs we're using are a little better than this. The i3-530 is better than the E8400. But let's talk about actually getting this game to run before we jump into the test. So installing Valorant, which is about 3.6 gigs, went very smoothly and we could start the game up just fine. However, when we got to the enter your display name screen, the whole game froze and we got a timeout error. Now I thought this was just because of a hardware limitation, something like that, because the game actually stated that our graphics card didn't meet the minimum requirements when we tried to start it. And so I thought this was the primary issue. I thought we wouldn't be able to carry on with this test. However, I came across a few fixes on Reddit and what I read actually surprised me quite a bit. It turns out that you have to install League of Legends, log in to your Riot Games account through League of Legends, sign out of League of Legends and then load Valorant again. After that, you'll get past the loading screen freeze and you'll be able to access the game. Now this is unlike any fix I've ever heard of before, having to log into another game before you can play the game that you actually want to play. But it turns out that this seems to only be the case with new Riot Games accounts. I mean, my account for Riot Games was brand new, so this is obviously why it was happening. But as far as the hardware goes then, that wasn't going to be an issue in this case, despite the initial warning. But with those details out the way, let's get into it and see how this two or three pounds i3-530 combined with an ancient 9800 GT and four gigs of RAM actually runs the game. So the game defaulted to 1080p resolution at the low settings and to test this hardware, I played through a match on this map. I didn't have too much time to spend on this test as I have a couple of bigger projects in the works, but this should still give you a good idea of the admittedly surprising Valorant performance. At 1080p with the low settings, we saw just over 60 FPS on average. With this hardware, I expected closer to 30 FPS, but it seems like the developers have tried their best to be as inclusive as possible when it comes to different hardware variations. If you are still using a setup like this, even a graphics card like this, then you should still be able to enjoy this game. Honestly, I thought that after seeing those initial on-screen warnings at the desktop that we wouldn't be able to proceed, but after clicking OK, the game was just like, well, he's going for it anyway, might as well just start. The 1% and 0.1% lows were also fine, and from what I experienced, there was no major stutter or freezes. For a more solid 60fps plus experience, you can turn things down to 900p. Doing so, and retaining the low settings, meant a 72fps average. Again, this was very surprising, and this result was accompanied by decent percentile figures. Well, figures that meant we weren't stuttering our way through the map. Overall, I'm very surprised, to be honest. Maybe this map is super lightweight or something, but from what I've tested, this, what some may call a potato PC, can handle Valorant with relative ease. There were certainly a few moments, like at the beginning of each game, where the frame rate hovered around the mid-30s before picking up, but 
yeah, without repeating myself, it seems to be playable on this old school hardware. And for those of you asking me about this game, when it comes to running on lower end specs, well, I hope this helps answer your question. It's certainly worth trying out because it is free after all, and it's only a 3.6 gigabyte download. So even those of you out there like me with pretty bad internet can get it downloaded within the hour, depending on how bad your internet is, of course, though. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.